The alleged Golden State Killer who terrorized California in the 70s and 80s makes his first court appearance. Clad in an orange jumpsuit, 72-year-old Joseph James D'Angelo went before a judge in a Sacramento courtroom in a wheelchair. He was arraigned on charges he killed a couple in Sacramento County in 1978. D'Angelo did not enter a plea. Prosecutors now say D'Angelo could be responsible for a 13th murder. He's also suspected in the rapes of dozens of women and hundreds of burglaries. Detectives used DNA to finally track down D'Angelo, but not before the technology led them to the wrong man. Nicole Brewer is here now with what the case means for your genetic privacy. Nicole. Well, hi, Yuki and Jess. You know, we learned today that back in March of 2017, investigators misidentified an elderly Oregon man as a possible suspect. He wasn't their guy, but on Tuesday, police arrested a man they say is responsible for at least a dozen killings and 50 rapes. While executing a violent crime spree across California in the 70s and 80s, the Golden State Killer covered up his face and his fingerprints, but left behind his genetic code. I believe very strongly that it's the greatest tool ever given to law enforcement. Sacramento County District Attorney Anne-Marie Schubert led a team of investigators to track down the suspect, a 72-year-old ex-police officer arrested on Tuesday. I thought it was crazy. I mean, you know, them finding like a guy like 40 years later. I'm pretty glad that they were able to ascertain who it was. Turns out investigators created a genetic profile from decades old crime scene data, then searched a public genealogy website called GEDmatch.com to find distant relatives. Interesting. Yes, but I think it brings up a whole bunch of legal questions like the privacy of people who use ancestry kits without realizing they're signing up to potentially become involuntary informants. I think in some cases it's okay to sacrifice elements of privacy in order to protect people. They know it's a public site, then they know the risk and they should uh, be okay with it. Free and open to the public, GEDmatch allows people to upload their DNA profiles from companies like Ancestry.com and 23andMe to expand their search for relatives. And while the commercial companies require a court order to obtain DNA, some say they'll think twice before completing one of their kits. It does raise the question, if it can be used for this, what else can it be used for? I kind of worry about what the implications are. Now, GEDmatch says it has always informed users that the database could be used for law enforcement purposes, as stated in the site policy. But if users have concerns, they can remove their DNA from that site or refrain from uploading it in the first place.